Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> um, there's a couple of filler episodes going up on the channel just while I was getting to grips with a few more videos that I wanted to get recorded. They don't get the views, but it's just like a filler episode because I have been releasing you know, a video every day for the past year. And I want to try and get a full year of doing that, which leads me into June, which might not be doable, but we'll, we'll see how we can do. Um, but I wanted to address a couple of the concerns that people have around my content and the MDRX. Here is my MDRX. And there's a couple of people that have referenced me in videos regarding to the sound of the gearbox and saying, oh, well, you know, the gearbox, it's up close to your face and you're shooting, it's going to be loud. Now, it wasn't the, the noise level that concerned me about the MDRX gearbox. It was to do with the, the mesh of the gears and it wasn't the sound volume, it was the sound itself that was the issue. And yes, I did have quite a few people doubt me. And you might well have pulled your MDRX out of the box and it sounds nice and smooth. And for that, you you know, well done. You've got one that doesn't need fettling. Um, but I went on to record a series of videos where I proved that what I actually... I know, one, I know what I'm talking about. And two, that the problem was actually there and it was warranted for me to talk about. Um, the only real crucial, apart from the gearbox sound, the only real crucial criticism that I had about this rifle was just the material that they used on some of the pieces but you know I didn't exactly say it broke the rifle for me I just said it would be nice if there was a bit better quality you know you could buy like cheap mounts like this from China for like $20 um, I don't see why this can't be machined in it wouldn't bother me if that part was machined in China um, but that's not the point of the video you know, see, I'll, I'll have dressed up a few things. And one of the other things that people like to say about my video um, that get it wrong was about the barrel wobble. Now, this gun has no barrel wobble. Um, there's no movement, as you'll see here, that's out of the ordinary. The wobble was from the handguard. And I did say in the video, once I had it on camera, that taking it off, resetting the handguard in place, and talking down the screws did fix it. And as you'll see... That isn't the barrel that's moving, it's the handguard. And, you know, I'm having to put a lot of flex on it. So the barrel wobble, it's not an issue, it never was. Just be very careful when you listen to the video of what the issue was that I was addressing. <clears throat> and I have put a few accessories on this just to get an idea of how I'm going to run the rifle. So this just seemed to be a, a, a sight. I probably am going to switch this out for the sight that's currently on my TAC 41, which I'm going to do a video about soon um believe it or not i think i've scratched that today which is just a primary arms acss scope now this scope's around 300 to 350 pounds i think roughly top of my head but this scope is just leaps and bounds ahead of anything that's created for the airsoft industry um, but we'll get that to that in a later video because you'll have seen that i have been order uh of offering the mdrx tuning um for the gearbox systems now, this will be done through Jaeger Precision and through uh, Jason at Longbow. You can get in touch with him and have it done beforehand, or you can get your gearboxes back to him and we'll, we'll figure it out somehow. And he has sent me a couple of gearboxes um, to get started with, which one of them was number 756, which did have a little bit of an issue with the sound of it. But this, I'm just using this one as, a, as a, an example. This is gearbox from serial number 10. Now this is a very low serialized number, especially when mine's 2,204. And uh, this gearbox actually, he's got his 100% cylinder on there, I'm gonna be working on this as well. This gearbox doesn't actually sound all that bad. It's a little bit off, but nothing, nowhere near uh, what mine was. So I will address it anyway, I will correct it because we want the gears to be nice and meshing. Um, which leads me on to the next point, where somebody in a video um, referenced me as a channel, saying that you know there's there's thousands of these these gearboxes are put like hundreds of thousands of rounds through, and I can get that if they sound smoother like this one does, probably never have an issue. I am telling you now from my experience, and it is extensive, that if I'd have run that gearbox in its state, I would have been fitting a new gear set 
within 5,000 rounds. There was wear on the gear anyway, and I'd probably shot like one or two magazines worth. So you could imagine how much that wear is going to amplify over a longer period of time. It needed fixing. It's been fixed. Now the gun is going to run smoothly. And I have no doubts that Silverback have ran gearboxes and put hundreds of thousands of rounds through. I'm just more interested to see when these uh, feeding O-rings wear out on the pistons, which they always did on the Sistemas. Again, you copy a system, you copy its problems. Uh, we'll see. And I think I've already seen a few things in the, in the Facebook groups of people it not loading. So uh, what I would say to you is stock up on those red O-rings in the front of the piston because that's going to be a high wear part. It's just something you're going to have to get used to. It's going to be an occupational hazard with this rifle and the setup. And uh, yeah, you're probably going to find you're replacing that uh, at a constant rate. It's just the way the system works, which comes from a system at PTW. And I would like to thank uh, Jason at Longbow because he has sorted me out. When I had my MDRX, it was meant to come with two springs. It didn't. So I had the one that was in there. And I also got a, a low-powered spring, um, which I didn't have the high-powered spring for a DMR. So he sorted that out for me. He's got a 120 Newton spring here, which he sent me. He's also sent me some different O-rings to test on the front of the piston there. So... If we do have any problems with the o-ring wearing out we can try these they do feel a tad soft but you know i'll wait i'll leave my um feedback on those until i've tested them thoroughly which we will do so thank you very much for that and he's also sent me a bunch of uh spare hot rubbers they come in a pack of four where you get all the different degrees of hardness so That'll be interesting as well if we do decide to DMR it. What do you think? Should I DMR this rifle? Should I keep it as a bit of a semi amp burst fire? Would be nice to be using it absolutely anywhere. I'm just waiting on trying to get an, a micron handguard. And then I'm going to turn the outer barrel down and have this suppressor, which is a CGS suppressor like this. I got mine from WGC in Hong Kong. I had this one a while ago for the MTW9, uh, which turned up a bit late. Uh, they're not the lightest of suppressors, but I bought another one in black, and it's got this real steel suppressor cover. And the only reason I've gone with a real steel suppressor cover, I think this was about £76 uh, from Brownells, is they just look more genuine than the crappy airsoft ones that we get, which is just, you know, some guy in China just mass producing these things. And they always come like in stupid lengths and... Just the quality on them is not great. So this is a real suppressor cover. It's a European made suppressor cover. So it's not meant for rapid fire or full auto. But I just wanted it for the look on there. So yeah. Anyway, I'm going off tangent here. So this is just a video just to point out a few inaccuracies in people's um, referrals to the video. Uh, I do really like this rifle. I seem to be one of only a few people that have got a really bad um, connection with the upper and lower receiver. I am told by the retailer that I bought this from that Silverback are aware of at least three of these rifles, which are the same. So they're working on a fix to address it. They've also read back, uh, fed back a couple of ideas. Um, Lamar actually offered for me to send this rifle to them. They had one there that wasn't loose. And if it was that bracket, they'd just switch it out for me, which is a really nice gesture for them. But I don't want to mess about sending the rifle off, getting it back. It's just a massive pain in the arse. So I'm going to see if I'm going to measure a few things, relay that back to them, see if they we can identify which part it is. I imagine it, it's it's either this bracket, and I can't just remove, because this bracket gets fixtured to the rifle like this, and it gets bolted through this way. I can't just face that and remove to bring this up, which would fix the handguard, the um, lower receiver wobble, because then the, the fixture for the handguard is obviously going to move up as well, and then that might not fit. So there's a couple of things we could try. There's also... You could see at the bottom here, we actually see the bracket. I could actually just drill and tap that. So drill it, tap it, put a grub screw in. As I wind the grub screw in, it's going to push that pin up and it's going to create the tension there. But it still does, even if I apply pressure, this still is a bit wobbly. So we'll see what Silverback come with, come back with. And uh, I am giving them time. I am giving them time to, uh, to fix the issue. So we'll see where that goes. There's also another thing that... Uh, I received from Jason Longbow, which is something I've been wanting to get for a while, which is a nice aluminium foldable chassis, 
from Attack 41. And I think in the next video, I'll talk about Attack 41 because I didn't have a very, very good experience with that either. Um, but through help of small companies, I managed to get it sorted. So thanks for this video. I just wanted to clear a few things up. I don't hate Silverback. I don't hate this rifle. I actually really, really like it. I have had a few issues, but we're going to work on getting those fixed. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.